Thank you. Welcome our viewers in the nation and beyond. As you are tuned in from your homes, the living rooms, and you are following our Elimu Live TV program right here at the Kenyatta University main campus. And I'll be taking you through a very interesting lesson today. A lesson that is handled in term two, unit seven, class seven. But I will also be talking pertaining the candidates, the questions that are normally set. So keep your questions coming using the numbers running on our screens. And I will be briefing you the parts I'll be handling in this broad topic, friendship and love. I love this topic so much because it teaches you how you should handle yourself making friends, how to make that friendship move without hitches here and there, and also ways of coping in case that friendship does not materialize what you ought to do. So this is what we'll be looking at. I'll be defining what emotions are. I will be looking at what are emotions. And under this, we shall be looking at negative emotions and positive emotions. And as we progress on, we will also be looking at ways of coping with emotions. Ways of coping with emotions. And I'll be giving you a, uh, a lot of ways in which you can cope with emotions in case you find yourself in a very tricky situation pertaining emotions and how to handle them. Then later on, we shall also be looking at accepting ourselves and others. Accepting ourselves and others. These others, let me put it in brackets and say your friends, because that is what we are looking at this morning. We shall also be looking at friendship in a broader way. We shall be looking at the real gist. Friendship. We shall be looking at this broader topic. Friendship in relation to the Bible and the topic. Friendship and love. And under that, we'll be looking at wanting or wishing the best for others. And something else under friendship, tolerance and patience in friendship. Tolerance and patience in friendship. Sometimes we bump into friends that we don't know how to handle. So there is what we call tolerance and patience as we deal with these kind of friends. So that we make sure that our friendship does not hit the rock bottom. And as we continue, we shall also be looking at necessity of loyalty, openness, and trust. Necessity of loyalty, openness in friendship, and trust. After that, we shall be looking also at sharing activities. And this topic is for every other person. If you are tuned in and you are following, it's also good for you. 
we shall be looking at sharing ac activities. How do we share as friends? Sharing activities. Sharing activities, how you ought to do it in the best way possible. Then we shall be looking at contributions of parents. Contributions of parents. Contributions of parents in making a happy home. There is a way the parents can contribute by bringing happiness in the home. And not only parents, under that, we shall also be looking at contributions of children in making a happy home. So it's a two-way traffic. There's a way children can make a home to be a living hell and same to parents. So it is up to the two working ways out of making sure that the home they live in is a very happy one. And this begins with the basics. And this is friendship and then love. So towards the end, I will be winding down by looking at the effects of good and bad friendship. The effects. We shall be looking at the effects of good and bad. We shall be looking at the effects of good and bad relationships in a family. Relationships in a family. How do they affect the way the people live in that family? And finally, I will wind it down all by looking at Christ, our best example. You can see that is the best thing now. If all fails, when all is said and done, and still you're not able to make it, then there is the last solution which is the best and this is Christ the best example Christ the best example so in a nutshell viewers that is what I will handle today I shall be looking at friendship and love and it's a very good thing to be a friend. Nobody wishes not to have a friend. And whenever you have a friend and they care so much for you, your well-being, when you are so much quiet, they inquire about you, know that this is a friend who is genuine, a friend who is concerned. So in one way or another, the way God has wired us, creating us in his own image and likeness, he created us as social beings. Therefore, as social beings, we are relational, we relate. We need, what, we need each other, we need other people in our lives for life to move smoothly. So having said that, allow me now to roll uh, this program, sit it back at home and make sure you keep your questions coming, including the candidates. I'll make sure I answer them with the precision here in studio. And I'll also be saying your names. It's a good thing to be heard on TV. So make sure you, you chat your questions and I will be responding to them as the lesson progresses. All right. Now, let us look at emotions. What are emotions? That is what I want to begin from. Whenever we talk about emotions, I'm so emotional so and so hurt my feelings. What are emotions? You realize that emotions, emotions are strong 
feelings. These are strong feelings. I'm underlining the word strong because they, they affect our core, our well-being. And when you are trampled in this way and you experience this kind of feelings, the very strong ones, then they are called emotions. So emotions are strong feelings we experience. They are very strong feelings that an individual, a person can experience. That is emotion. So, they are grouped into two examples or uh, let me say categories or groups of emotions. They are grouped into two. One, we have negative emotions. These negative emotions, they are not desirable. In short, they are undesirable. They are the ones that you don't, you don't feel like having them. They are not good. They are not beneficial. They are undesirable. They are bad, if I use a simple word. They cause bad feeling or bad feelings. We can say they drain. They can drain your energy. You know, they hurt. These are negative emotions. So the negative emotions, they make somebody feel unwanted. They make one feel unwanted. They make one look like you don't matter. They make one look unwanted. These are negative emotions. Examples of negative emotions we have fighting Things like fighting, examples, we have fighting, we have quarreling, negative emotions, quarreling, depression, hate, you see? negative emotions, suicide, right, suicide. These are examples of negative emotions. Abusing others, abusive, let me say abusive language, that sounds better. And of course we are not new in this. So these are examples of negative emotions. Very negative, draining, undesirable. And I will not recommend any person to waste their precious time acquiring negative emotions. Then the other one is positive. We have positive emotions. Under positive emo emotions, if we use alternative terms, you can say these emotions are desirable. You can desire to acquire these emotions or to have them. They are good, right? They excite, right? This kind of emotions encourage good energy. Encourage good energy, this kind of emotions. So let's look at examples. 
let us look at examples of positive emotions examples of positive emotions that we can desire to have as we tend to make friends so we have joy love happiness these are examples of positive emotions excitement examples of positive emotions so having defined the meaning of emotions the strong feelings that we have or we experience and then having given the examples of emotions negative and positive i want us to continue and look at ways of coping with emotions how do you cope with emotions ways of coping with emotions how do we cope with these emotions whether they are negative or positive as you tend to make friends with your neighbor where you live with the person you are traveling with in that vehicle how do you cope with emotions ways of coping with emotions there is always a way out okay so one thing you have to admit is that these emotions are evoked they come about in different circumstances right that we find ourselves in for example when you are angry learn to control yourself and the best way is forgiving so one of the ways of coping with emotions is controlling your anger anger controlling your anger when irritated and forgiving you just forgive i know it is very simple to say forgive it is the hardest task for almost everybody depending on the kind of a heart that you have there are those who are hard hardened i mean their hearts are very hard and when you talk about forgiveness they wonder is that simple so you have to admit control your anger you have to control when irritated and forgive you can forgive so this thing here is not good though the bible says that in your anger do not sin so we are permitted to get angry sometimes you find yourself in a situation that prompts you to be angry so the best thing you can do is don't do something fishy in such a situation control it when irritated and then forgive the person who has done that to you the other one which is the best is praying praying is the best medicine because as you make a prayer you commune with god you talk to him as a friend talks to a friend open your heart and pour your heart to god in prayer pertaining whatever emotions that are assailing you that are affecting you and our god is a good god he listens and answers to our prayers in fact he says that when we pray the holy spirit groans in words that we cannot understand and he understands our emotions as we pray and god will answer us he, he says that do not be anxious for anything but through prayer and supplication make your requests known to me philippians 4:6 
Something else that you can do as a way of coping with emotions is um, seeking guidance and counseling. You can seek seeking guidance and counseling. Go to an expert and possibly somebody who is not related to you because most of the times if you go to a person whom you know, you tend to shun and not open up some things. But if you get a counselor who is new to you, somebody recommended with good CVs, good testimony, go to them, share your frustration, open your heart, and they, they will be in a position to, to, to assist you. They are professionals. They are trained to handle people like you. Do not contemplate committing suicide. Do not contemplate to end your life. Do not even think of it. You are so precious before God. He created you in his own image and likeness. Okay. Another way you can cope with emotions is exercising patience and tolerance. You can as well exercise. Exercising patience and tolerance. You can exercise this. Just be patient and then tolerate. And that does not come easily, but the Bible gives us various, various good examples. Somebody like Job suffered and still he was not able to fail in his faith in God. I can still talk about another thing, a way of coping with emotions, forgiveness. We talked about it there, but it's, we can still repeat it as a broader one. You can forgive. And there are people who say, I can forgive, but I cannot forget what you did to me. Just forget and let off everything that happened. It is that easier. Right? Don't harbor bitterness. And then the last one, sharing the problem with a trusted friend. You can share your frustrations, sharing your problems with a trusted friend. And I will underline trusted friend. Not everybody can be trusted. You might go open up your heart to somebody, telling them all that you're going through. And the moment you two are at loggerheads, you have stopped being friends, and everything you ever said is put in the public domain. So be very careful whom you share your trouble or problems with. Okay. Then we have a Bible verse here, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, chapter, chapter 4, verses 26 to 32. This Bible verse, actually I had said it earlier, it talks about if you become angry, if you become angry, do not let your anger lead you to sin. Do not let your anger lead you to sin. And do not stay angry all day long. Because if you do so, you will give the devil a chance. You will give him a foothold to destroy you. So this Bible verse encourages, actually it says it's not wrong to be angry. It's not wrong to be angry. It's not wrong to get irritated once in a while. But if you get angry, the Bible says do not stay all long all day long and give the devil a chance to do something bad, right? So it talks about get rid of all bitterness, get rid of all, get rid of all bitterness in short, 
then that Bible verse also says, do not be angry all day long. You sulk from morning to evening. You don't eat. In your anger, in your anger, do not sin. That is what it says. All right. So we can move on and look at ac accepting ourselves and others. We are moving on well. Accepting ourselves and others. Do you accept yourself? So I want us to look at accepting ourselves and others. So viewers, sometimes you may have come across people who demean you. They tell you negative things about yourself until you reach a point in life where you say you are useless, you don't, you don't count in this life and you feel out of place. Today I'm here to encourage you to accept yourself because before God, he created you in his own image and likeness. You are so precious before him. So one thing you need to know is that we are all, we are all created in God's image and likeness, right? Accept that fact. Number two is that we are all equal before God, right? We are all equal. We are all equal before God. So there is that element of equality created in God's image and likeness. So accept that fact and stop listening to the baseless talks. So we should avoid self-hatred. Number three, we should avoid self Hatred, hating yourself. Avoid doing that. We should avoid self hatred. So, those are some of the ways of accepting yourself and others. When you look at the other person next to you, see the creation of God. See somebody created in God's image and likeness. See somebody wonderfully and beautifully created, the creation of God. Praise them. Say nice things to them. Uplift their spirit. All right? Good. Okay. I want now us to move and look at friendship. As I lay the foundation of this lesson today, I want us now to get a little bit deeper. We want now to talk about friendship. And under this, we shall be looking at mutual respect. We shall be looking at mutual respect. When we talk about friendship, there is this element of mutual respect. Mutual respect. So a friend is a person you know very well and you like. That is the basic definition of a friend. This is somebody you know. Because you cannot be a friend to somebody you don't know. There are things that you would be free with. So a friend is a person you can also share things with. You share very common things. And therefore... We should respect our friends, mutual respect, we can say, comes when we respect 
our friends. So this mutual respect is just earned. Number one, you have to respect your friends' ideas, opinions. Yes, you have to respect those kind of things that your friends have. Maybe their ideas, their opinions. And then number two, when people are friends, they share problems. When you are mutual friends, you can share your problems. You share your problems with the person you call your friend. And then when we say people are friends, we can say that mutual respect is a two-way traffic. Mutual respect is a two-way traffic. What I mean by two-way traffic is that you cannot expect to be respected if you, as an individual, you don't respect. So it's like you respect your friend and your friend respects you back. It's give and take. I respect you, you respect me. And the Bible is very clear on this. The two cannot work unless they agree. So if at all you say that you are friends, then it means that the two of you have a common interest in that your ideas are almost the same. Your opinions, whenever you have them, there's a way you balance and share them and respect the differences, should there be any. So that is what it means, mutual respect is a two-way traffic. Respecting your friend, your friend respects you, and the two of you work together. And there's also this element, wishing the best for others. In mutual respect, wishing the best. Wishing the best for others. In fact, if I may put it in other words, seeing your friend as better than you. And that is the best way of practicing humility. When you consider your friend better than you. Okay. And by the way, true friendship is when we wish the best for others at the expense of ourselves, but not to the point that now we, we degrade or downgrade ourselves. Okay. So, mutual friends visit Mutual friends visit each other. And of course, at your age, make sure that your parents are aware of where you go. It, it's also about comforting each other. also about comforting each other if they are going through some issues you can comfort them right talk to them listen to them then we have you can also say that true friendship involves love and I will clarify this because some of you will begin overthinking of boy girl relationship it's not about that and that can wait until the right time so for you, you are still growing up, and there are things you don't expect to hear from you. I will not talk about it here in a different way. So true friendship, true friendship involves love. And I've said there's nothing here that I've said that concerns boys and girls. A loving friend is patient. If you want to know a loving friend, these are the attributes of a loving friend. 
So a loving friend is patient. A loving friend is kind. A loving friend is faithful. A loving friend is faithful. A loving friend is ready to forgive. There is no way the two of you can disagree and you don't forgive each other. If you happen to be in such a kind of a friendship where the friend does not forgive, then I'll advise you to think twice about your friendship. Okay. We have another scripture here, a Bible verse, 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians. What does it say about friendship? 13, verse 4 to 7. Be writing them down so that you can refer to them. It talks about that it talks about tolerance and patience in friendship. That verse there you can check. I won't read it here. If you are told you are in a good friendship, then there is tolerance. There is also patience over there. So let's look briefly at tolerance and patience in friendship. These are the two most important ingredients in a friendship. Tolerance and patience in a friendship. So tolerance means when you talk about to tolerate each other. And you know as a nation sometimes when politics are almost beginning to take shape, there is that tag we give ourselves and it's not a good one. So there is what we call tolerance, ability to, to put up, tolerate. This is ability, ability to put up, put up, up with, it can either be something or somebody. When you are able to put up, tolerate them, that is tolerance. Then we have patience, ability to endure. Patience. This one is ability to endure a situation, right? Ability to endure. So those two ingredients of friendship are very key. And especially I will use a story in the Bible where this is illustrated very well in the book of Genesis. There is a man there, a man called Jacob. Jacob tolerated his uncle, 15 to 29. So if you look at this story, it talks about tolerance and patience because this young man, wanted to marry one of the uncle's daughters and this is Jacob fell in love with one of the uncle's daughters and he desired to marry her and he was told if you want to get this lady you have to work for this duration so we have the story of Jacob right then there is the there is this lady, Rachel, and of course we have this Leah. So you see, Jacob wanted to marry this one and he was told to work for work for seven years to get Rachel. 
And that did not happen. It's, it was so sad in that during the wedding day, I don't know whether the veil was still there and the wedding dress, the way ladies are covered like that, or which time of the day were they wedding. Because if you look at the way people are wedding today, you have to open the veil and see, and then the pastor, the padre, whatever, the person who is uniting the two, will ask you, confirm if she's the one. I don't know whether the story came from there. Because this man wedded, given the wife, then when he woke up in the morning, he realized that he had been shortchanged. He had been given a different person. So it was told now for him to get the real lady that he wanted to marry, he should work for another seven years. So altogether, Jacob worked for 14 good years. Imagine a 14 is a child who is uh, in class 8, working for all that time to get Rachel. So, Laban did not do well. He did not do the right thing by changing Jacob. But we learn something from this story. That even after Jacob was disappointed, he did not give up. He tolerated. He was patient and worked for all those years to get the person that he wanted to marry. Right? So, it is this person, Jacob, was tolerant and patient in in his endeavor in his endeavor to get Rachel right so this is a be the best example given in the bible where somebody tolerated very for a long time in order to get the kind of a person that he wanted. So having said that, I want us to move and look at something else. I want us to look at necessity of loyalty, openness, and trust in friendship. I want us to look at necessity of loyalty. When we talk about a certain friend is not loyal, what does it mean? Let us look at necessity of loyalty when you talk about loyalty necess necessity of loyalty openness and trust openness and trust in friendship What does it entail to be loyal, to be open, and to be trustworthy? All right. So loyalty or loyalty, this one means loyalty is being faithful in supporting somebody. This one just means being faithful in supporting somebody and this somebody is your friend when you are loyal then it means you are faithful then we have supporting somebody then we have openness open when we talk about being open openness is being honest this is being honest without hiding without hiding information you are very open without hiding information so when we say you are open that is what it means when you don't hide any information you're being open all right and then we have the the last one, we have the last attribute we have talked about, trust, we've talked about openness, and I want us to look at trust. What is trust? What is trust? 
Then we have the last one, trust. Trust in friendship is being sincere. Trust means being sincere without without an intention of without an intention of causing harm that is the meaning of trust when you are sincere and you don't intend to cause any harm to that person then we say you are trustworthy. Now, I will take you to the Bible again. We look at this person and I will tell you a question that normally is brought in KCPE that touches on this. Touches on trust, openness, and being sincere. I will tell you this. So we have this story, First Samuel chapter 20. The book of First Samuel chapter 20. There's another illustration there of the friends who are walking this way. Verses 1 through 23. Then you can also continue the story in chapter 19 of the same book of 1 Samuel, verses 2. Now, in this story, you will get friends who are loyal, open, and trustworthy to each other, and this is none other than Jonathan. Jonathan, son of Saul, King Saul, right? And then the other one was David, son of Jesse. We can say, according to the Bible story given, that these two were open friends. They were loyal friends. They trusted each other. In that Jonathan at some point even made his father swear. He told him, you have to swear to me that you will not harm David. Right? So these two, they kept nothing in secret. In fact, many, many a times it was Jonathan who was coming to David's rescue, especially when King Saul was looking after him and wanted to take away his life. So this is an, a good example of friends who were trustworthy, who were, they trusted each other, they were open to each other in the Bible. So the two friends trusted each other. David promised to remain loyal to his friends forever and you see the only thing that separated that separated the two was death when Jonathan died okay let me move a little bit faster so that I cover the entire topic let us look at another subtopic there sharing activities with others when it comes to friendship sharing activities with others how do you share activities with other people in order to enhance friendship so we have activities like games and sports when you want to bond and have friendship so these activities may be at school we can talk about the activities you can like for example at school which activities can you engage in to better your friendship. We talk about games and sports. We can talk about clubs and societies. When you go to these clubs and societies, they teach you. They give you skills on how you can improve your friendship. Acting together. You can also act, acting together Maybe in drama, we can talk about 
issues like um, trips and ex excursions. When you go for trips and excursions, these are also ways of enhancing your friendship, right? Trips and ex 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 excursions when you go out there, all right? And then we have Ecclesiastes 12. I'll just write this one as you will be checking from your homes using your Bibles. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 to 14. 12, 13 to 14. Sharing activities. This Bible verse. encourages us to fear God and obey his commandments and he says that God will judge everything we do whether good or evil done in open and in secret so whatever you do in your friendship make sure that you do it for the glory of God because he will judge whatever we do whether in the open or in sec in secrecy then we have the book of acts we talk about the early church. This is also a question that is normally tested. I've spoken about the friendship between Jonathan and David, and it's tested in class 8 and also in the other classes. Then we have Acts chapter 2. talks about the early church. Acts chapter 2, verses 46 to 47. This one, this is how the early church was. So, these people fellowshiped together. They fellowshiped together. You can realize again they shared meals together. The kind of friendship. They shared the meals together. Right? Shared property. Some of them sold parcels of land. They shared. They shared property. This is the kind of friendship that we need as Christians. And this question is very common. Sometimes they ask you, which of the following activities was not among the ones that the early church or the believers used to do together? So these are some of them. They pray together as well. Fellowshipping together means also praying together. Then let's look at contributions of parents in making a, a, a happy home. How do parents contribute in making our homes happy? As we almost come to the end of our lesson, Let's look at the role of parents. Let me say roles of parents. Roles of parents in making a home happy. In making a home happy. So as a parent, I'm also talking to you today with all humility as you are tuned in from your homes. There are also ways that you can do to make your home a happy. Number one, make friendship with your children. Be open to them. Trust your children. When they tell you they are going somewhere and really they are going to that place, trust them. So children look up to their parents as role models. And also they look up to you for love and support. Give them that. Number two, be role models to your children. Being a role model means doing the right thing always in that the children look up to you. Teach children good manners, mannerism, how to talk, how to sit, how to walk, which kind of companies the, this kind of children need to have. Avoid favoritism in the family. Favoring firstborn, lastborn. You know, we, we always tend to believe that lastborns are pampered. Right? Just treat all your children 
in a fair way. Provide security and protection. Let them feel at home. We don't want to see when dad arrives home, children scamper for safety and they take cover under the, the chairs and some go to the kitchen. Provide spiritual nourishment to your children. Read Bible stories and all that. And for children as well, there is something you can also do to make that home happy. As a children, you also have a role to play to make your home a happy one. And this you can do by being obedient. Obedience is key. It is biblical. Obey your parents in the Lord. For this is a command with a promise. You remember, and the promise is long life that you may live long. Obeying and respecting your parents, work hard in school. That is how you can reward your parents for paying all your school fees, right? Share home chores, work, help the house manager at home. Do, do some work. We have stayed at home for long and we don't want to see you coming back to school and still you're not able to take care of some small things like washing your clothes and all that. And then finally, I will be looking at the effects, effects of good and bad relationships in a family. When people relate well, there is a lot of benefits. It enhances good communication if you are relating very well. There is stability, there is security, there is patience, there is respect. And if this good relationship is not there, then there is self fishness. There is bitterness in that family and it will not agar well with you as a family. So let us make sure that whatever homes we come from, that we enhance good friendship, very good examples given in the Bible, the friendship between Jonathan and David is a classical example of trust openness, yes, of loyalty. The friendship that Laban had with Jacob, we can learn something there. Tolerance, perseverance, that no matter sometimes the situation you find yourself in, learn to be tolerant, right? Learn to persevere. So those are some of the things, and once we tackle those questions in class, they test you the friendship between Jonathan and, and David. It's about loyalty. And finally, all this thing is about Jesus is the best example of a friend. His friendship is this way, and all of us know the book of John chapter 3 and verse 16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not die, but have everlasting life. So Jesus loved us so much to the point that he came to die for us. So that is the best example of friendship that a friend can take his own life to rescue another friend from going to hell and dying in that place, tormented in that place forever. Thank you very much, our dear viewers, for keeping it locked at the KUTV. Thank you very much.